the trees look like bears that are stopping up all the houses. Uh, you can really control kudzu with goats and at the same time you can grow goats on kudzu. And I don't believe we'd use your milk because you're feeding this kudzu. <laughs> And it's probably going to ruin the mess. So we'll go taste of it. Go drink some. It's actually uh, touted in China as a, as a hangover remedy. You take it the day after. Well, we gave it to some animals. They've been drinking alcohol for two to three weeks. It's alkaline. It washes out the impurities in your system. And it keeps you young. Kudzu grows on road banks and up on power poles. I don't know who brought it here, but God rest her soul. Brought it here to keep the blessed soil from washing away. But how could they know that kudzu grows at least a foot a day? Kudzu grows a foot a day if it grows at all. It can climb the highest tree up or through a wall. Don't sit too close to it if you've got nothing to do. Because if you sit there for too long, it will cover you. It's sort of an invasive plant, so you, you have to make sure that you can control it. It doesn't disperse by seeds very much. It's mainly by vines, okay, because the seeds are not very viable. So for instance, if you take a vine and you just trample it and put it in the ground, it's going to make roots. And if you don't pay attention, pretty soon it's all over your garden. This tree looks like an elephant. It has the trunk like an elephant and goes We had a drought very soon after we had gotten the cattle and the um, the drought presented uh, not too much good food value, except that the kudzu was so green and pretty. And my husband thought, well, my goodness, he ought to find out about kudzu. So he and the extension agent from here in the county, John Crawford, went to Clemson University. And Dr. King said, we will love kudzu. And he said, the cows will too. The, we were selling the seal test in Charlotte to the milk company, and they heard we're feeding kudzu. And the field man came up and said, I don't believe we can use your milk because you're feeding this kudzu. <laughs> and it's probably going to ruin the milk. So we'll go taste of it. Go drink some. Well, nothing wrong with it. So they kept taking the milk. But if you change from one silage to kudzu, they'll always pick up in milk. And their milk from the very next day, they'll be picking up in their milk. Because cows, the more they eat, the more they give. And the more they like it, the more they'll eat, and the more they'll give. So that's. Uh, the story of the cows and the kudzu. David Overstreet, a professor of psychiatry. I work in the alcohol center in the Department of Psychiatry with different uh, animal models of depression and alcoholism. It's originally uh, touted in China as a, as a hangover remedy. You take it the day after. Well, we gave it to some animals in which they've been drinking alcohol for two to three weeks and then you take it off and you get a, an anxiety-like behavior. Well, this compound reduces that. Um, it's related to benzodiazepines or Valium, okay? But it doesn't act like Valium. It acts like the opposite of Valium. It doesn't produce dependence itself, but it will correct alcohol dependence. And so we have a thought that it might be able to be given to people as they're becoming detoxified from alcohol reducing the anxiety symptoms there, and then continue on and help them stay off the alcohol. Now, the compounds that come from kudzu are called isoflavones. The one we specifically work with is the one that's most highly concentrated in kudzu, and so it got its name from the scientific name of the plant. Puraria lobata is kudzu, and our compound is purarin. A gingerbread man getting squished. Because you can see the head, the body, the arms, and mostly the eyes. This is made of the green vine in the summertime. I've gotten to the age where I need shade when the sun's bearing down on you. So I thought, well, I'll put this hat on. And that's what I did one afternoon. And it's been on ever since. So kudzu is so valuable, not only for animals, it's also good for humans, and we didn't find that out until 1977 when the Book of Kudzu came out. We found out that you can eat it yourself, and, and uh, it, we just had a ball with it. It is delicious. You can, it's filling, and you can just make a meal on it. And, uh... The uh, active ingredients come from the leaves and stems. Uh, what's interesting is several years ago, uh, a company from Japan came in 
they were going to, to set up their operations here because what they do in Japan is they use the kudzu root as a pasta-like substance, so they make sp spaghetti and those sorts of things. Um, so we had discussions with them that if they moved here, then we might get the stems and leaves whenever they do a harvest because they're not interested in those. The, the kudzu extract itself would definitely be in the herbal supplement range. In fact, you can go out and get them at, at GNC and some of the other stores, but we do not rec recommend that um, as a treatment for alcoholism because you never know what's in them. If, if we were going to make an herbal supplement which was available to people who were heavy drinkers, then we would institute quality control and we'd have exactly the same amount of the active ingredient in each batch. The kudzu looks like a big giant dragon because it has the big giant breathing flames coming out trying to touch you because the tree goes all the way up and goes all the way down. It goes like this where the claws and its feet go like this. And I like it when the when it shakes around. You gather the blossoms. I do it in the evening because the bees also like them. And then you bring them in, and I like to bring a big dish pan full in. And then you wash them out, they're very thorough, about three or four times. Bring it in and put it in a pan for the top of the stove, and you cover it with water. Bring the water to a boil, and then you turn it off and let it sit there for eight to ten hours. Then in the morning, you strain that. You will come out with kind of a brown, tannish liquid. You use a recipe which calls for two tablespoons of lemon or lime juice and that turns it a magenta pink. And then you process it like you do normally do jelly and then you put it in your jars and you have presto, you have jelly. You can graze 200 chickens to the acre, you can graze 8 hogs to the acre and uh, turkeys like it and they can the fine stuff, you know, you can give it for guinea pigs and rabbits for pets and stuff like that. The best strategy to use is to put a lot of goats in a small area so we are going to see an impact right away. Mm -hmm. you know, if you have a good fence, uh, you can really control kudzu with goats and at the same time you can grow goats on kudzu. As far as we know, there is no, no anti-quality factor in kudzu. It's very, very, very high in proteins. We found out that the leaves are about 24% or 23% to between 23 and 24% crude protein. And they even eat the stems. They would, they would just take all the leaves and these little stems and then they eat part of these stems. I mean, here they would, they would eat at least all that. You know, the terminal part, they would eat. And they eat the like spaghetti, it's really funny because they take <laughs> it in their mouth like this. If the goats eat all the leaves, in order for regrowth to occur, the plants have to draw on the reserves that they have in the roots. If they still have some leaves, well, photosynthesis comes into play and makes carbohydrates using, you know, the energy from the sun, and so they are going to regrow faster. So that's the strategy that we are using, trying to weaken the plant such that they don't have any more reserves in the roots, mm -hmm. and so they cannot make leaves anymore and they die. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm.